Reflecting and refraction. Under some circumstances, waves behave to a good approximation as if they travel in straight lines, being blocked by barriers and casting sharp shadows. And this is called the geometric optics, okay? an approximation that light is traveling in a straight line. And this is the one. This is called the incident ray. Uh, on the surface between air and glasses, two different mediums with different index of refraction. The theta one is the angle of incident. Theta one prime is the angle of reflecting ray. And theta two is the angle of refraction. Uh, this is two because it's a different medium. This is one because they are the same medium. Okay, and we have law of reflection. Uh, theta one prime equal to theta one. Uh. A light bulb with a very small filament will be used to show that light travels in straight lines. Shadows cast by these objects have the same shape as the outline of the objects themselves. Theta one prime a narrow beam of light one. is aimed at a small mirror in the center of this disk. This is the angle of incidence of the beam, and this is the angle of reflection. We'll rotate the disk to show how the angle of reflection of the beam varies with the angle of incidence. The angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. This device consists of a microwave emitter, a microwave receiver, and a bar graph display whose length is proportional to the intensity of the microwaves picked up by the receiver. We'll use it to show how microwave radiation is reflected when it strikes a metal plate. If we attach this aluminum plate to the center of the board, the display shows that the beam no longer passes through to the receiver. Rotating the receiver around to the other side of the plate shows that the microwave beam is reflected by the metal plate. The beam is reflected from the metal plate at the same angle at which it struck the plate. Law of refraction. Uh, you had a, a light shining from a medium one with index of a refraction N1 to a medium two with index of refraction N2. In this case, N2 is larger than N1. So the light shining in and the reflection and refraction, okay? And we have a formula N1 sine theta 1 equal to N2 sine theta 2. You see that N2 is larger than N1. This is larger than this one. So this must be smaller than this one. And so theta 2 is smaller than theta y in this case. This is a monochromatic light. It is the index of refraction m equal to c over v. v is the velocity of this light in this medium. c is the largest, so n is always larger than 1. The index of refraction is, is dimensionless because velocity, velocity. Okay, is a constant for medium. Okay. As C is the speed of light in vacuum, and V is the speed of light in the medium in question. If n1 equal to n2, n1, so the theta1 equal to theta2, we don't see the refract. Okay. Uh, reverse, if n1 larger than n2, n1 larger than n2, so this is smaller than this one. Theta one is smaller than the one. It reflects in this direction. Uh, 
This is some index of refraction. Okay, the vacuum is exactly one. The water is one point three three. Okay, uh, the, the the polymer is one point five five, and so on. When a beam of light strikes the surface of a transparent material, the beam is both refracted and reflected at the surface. This is the reflected beam, and this is the refracted beam. Notice how the angle of each beam changes as the block is rotated. You've probably noticed that a stick appears bent when placed in a glass of water. We'll demonstrate the same effect using these square acrylic and lead glass blocks to make the effect more visible. This stick is lowered onto the blocks with the camera looking straight on, and the image of the stick appears unaffected. When we rotate the blocks, the images of the stick are shifted to the side by a different amount in each block. When we look at a transparent object such as this glass eyedropper, we can see it even though it is perfectly clear. Differences in the refraction indexes of the glass and air allow us to see the edges of the glass. When we put the eyedropper in a liquid that has the same index of refraction as the glass and fill the dropper with the liquid, the eyedropper nearly disappears. We'll use these light beams and a mirror to show two different types of reflections. This side of the mirror reflects all parts of the beams at the same angle, and we still have a beam. This is known as specular reflection. The other side of the mirror is covered with a sheet of white paper. If we put that side and the light beams, the light is reflected in many directions, and we no longer have a beam. This is known as diffuse reflection. This animation shows how different parts of the beams are reflected from the two surfaces. Chromatic dispersion. The index of reflection is not a constant, even for a same material. You like this one? Uh, this is uh, 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 the light, okay, this is a uh, uh, red line, this is a blue line, this is wavelength, okay. We, and you see the index of reflection changes a little bit, okay, it changes a little bit, okay. okay. Generally, the index of reflection in a medium is larger for a shorter wavelength, corresponding to, say, blue light then for a longer wavelength, say, red line. The index of refraction N, encountered by light in any medium but vacuum, depends on the wavelength lambda of the light. This implies that rays of different wavelengths have different speeds in a given medium, okay, because N related to V. Okay. And then, and different, the angles differ. It also implies that rays of different wavelengths are refracted by different angles when it across the surface. Thus, when a light beam consists of compounds with different wavelengths, refraction of the beams at a surface separates the components so that they travel in different directions. This effect is called chromatic dispersion, in which chromatic refers to a color associated with each wavelength, and dispersion refers to the separation of the wavelengths or colors. Monochromatic beams does not show chromatic 
just approaching no different wavelengths. Generally, the index of refraction in a medium is larger for a shorter wavelength corresponding to, say, blue light, than for a longer wavelength, say, red light. This means that when white light refracts through the surface, the blue components bends more than the red components with the intermediate colors undergoing intermediate bending. We have this one, different and different angle. So, with us from the air to glasses, from smaller index of refraction to a large index of refraction, you see this one, that this is a straight line. The blue line bend more. On the other side, if you shining the white light from the glass to air, uh, this is a large index of refraction or this. Uh, and then you see that one, the, the straight line, the red line also blew higher than the red line. Uh, this is uh, written, okay, see the blue line bend more than red line. The most charming example of chromatics dispersion is a rainbow. Okay. You see the rainbow? Uh, what happened? Your sunshine, you hit the water drops in the air, and they, you see that they, they reflect, reflect, and reflect, okay? And then they combine, you see that this, the red line is on the top, the blue line is on the dark. Uh, and it turns out uh, this angle is 42 degree, okay? okay. And you, if you can see a rainbow here, the sun must be behind you, okay? And it must be after raining, you have a lot of water dropped in the air, okay? Well, this is not the only chance you can see the wind. You can have another chance at angle 55. This line is called transmit, reflect, reflect, and reflect, okay? And in this case, you see the red color is in the lower part, and the blue color is on the top part. So in many cases, you can see two rainbows in the sky, okay? And one is top, one is bottom. And you see the, the top one the red one is an under one, and the and the the, the bottom and the red one up top. You can notice that one. They are different structure. Sample. In a figure, a beam of monochromatic light reflects and they refract it at point A. On the interface between material one, with index of refraction n 1.33, and material two with index of refraction N2 equal 1.77. The incident beam makes an angle 50 degree with the interface. Theta 1, uh, this is a 50 degree. So theta 1 is 90 degree minus 40 degree is 40 degree. Question A, what is the angle of refraction at point A? This one is very simple. We just have a formula, okay? A very simple one. But this one, remember, this is a 40, F theta 1. Okay, look at theta 2 is 92. Question B. The light that enters material 2 at point A, then reaches point B on the interface between material 2 and 3, which is air, as shown in the figure. This is N3 is equal to 1. The interface through B is parallel to that through A. Some of the light reflects and the rest enter the air. What is the angle of reflection? Theta 2 prime. What is the angle of refraction in the air? Theta 3. Ah, that's a very straightforward formula, okay? Theta 2 is equal to the same thing as this one, as this one. This one equal to this one equal to this one, right? Because they are parallel. And we put the equation. And we can get the theta 3. 
okay? Very simple, straightforward. It's about 59 degree. This disc with different colored sectors can be used to show that white light consists of many separate colors. When the disc is spun rapidly, the colors merge into white. We'll use this disc called a rainbow disc to show one way in which the colors composing white light can be separated. When a beam of light enters the disc, it is refracted, then internally reflected, and then refracted again as it leaves the disc. The beam of white light spreads into a spectrum. Internal Total internal reflection. We look at the, the source, source in the medium with index reflection N1. This is glasses, and the interface is glass and air. So N2 is smaller than N1, equal to 1. Uh, what happened? We still obey this one, okay? M1 sine theta 1, N2 sine theta 2. The question here is N1 is larger than N2. So we can see theta 1 is smaller than theta 2. You see, this one is incident angle, theta 3, theta, okay? And this is a refract angle, okay? And refract angle, theta 2 is larger than incident. So when you increase the incident angle until the reflect angle theta two equal to 90 degree. And what's happening after the incident angle increase? And we find is the light totally reflect, they call it internal reflection. And this angle, when the reflect angle is 90 degree, we call it a critical angle. When theta 2 equal to 90 degree, at this angle, we call it critical angle. Okay, and we can find this one, critical angle, very easy, uh, because this is 90 degree. Okay, so sine 90 is equal to 1. And then critical theta is arc sine, okay, N2 of M1. Sometimes you may confuse. N2 of M1 or N1 and 2. I'll tell you a trick. Sine is always smaller than 1. So N2 must be smaller than 1. That's the situation. Optical fibers for optical communication. It, we know all our communication used optical fiber now. Fiber optics cables such as these have revolutionized communications. Here is a larger version of a fiber optics cable known as a light pipe. When we shine light in one end of the pipe, much of the light comes out the other end despite the bends in the pipe. The light is totally internally reflected at the inner surface of the pipe and is thus channeled through the pipe from one end to the other. We'll use this water tank and a parallel beam of light to demonstrate total internal reflection. A chemical in the water fluoresces when the light strikes it, showing the path of the beam. This mirror reflects the beam up to the surface of the water at any angle we choose. When the beam strikes the surface straight on, very little of the light is reflected. At a shallower angle, more of the light is reflected but most still passes out into the air as shown by this thread screen. Notice the misalignment between the beam in water and the beam in air. At a still shallower angle, the beam is refracted so much that it becomes parallel to the surface. This is known as the critical angle situation. 
if the beam hits the surface at an angle shallower than the critical angle, all the light is reflected back at the surface and none crosses through. This is known as total internal reflection. These acrylic tubes will be used to show the type of total internal reflection which makes fiber optics communications possible. When a laser beam is aimed into the end of this tube, the beam bounces off the walls and is guided along the length of the tube, emerging from the far end. The laser beam can also be guided along this curved tube. Real fiber optics cables can bend around corners without losing any of the light passing along them. We now demonstrate total internal reflection of laser light in a water jet. A laser is aligned such that its light passes through a water tank and into a tube at the bottom of the tank. Powdered coffee cream has been added to the water to make the laser beam more visible. When the stopper is removed, water squirts out of the tank into the container below. The laser beam is reflected internally and follows the water jet into the tank. In this close-up view, we can see the internal reflections of the laser beam in the water jet. At this point, too. Figure shows I tried angular prism of glass in air. An incident ray enters the glass perpendicular to one face and is totally reflected at the far glass air interface. As indicated, if theta 1 is 45 degrees, what can you say about the index of reflection n of the glass? The light this is a 45 degree this okay must be larger than the, the total reflection angle critical angle okay all right so and critical angle is sine theta n2 or minus n1 okay in our case n1 is 1 n2 is the glass okay okay i don't know this is a smaller than 45, okay, because at 45, it's already internal reflex, okay. So, from this one, we get N, okay, okay. N is larger than square two, 1.5.